Okay, is everyone awake still? Hope you enjoy your lunch. Um, had some good coffee. Um, this talk is very untechnical, so you can just go back on your, on your seats and just fall asleep if you want. <laughs> just don't snore too loudly, it disturbs me. Anyway, um, welcome back for the second session, for the half the second half of today. Uh, the first session, um, I'm having the pleasure of, uh, of talking. So um, we're going to start with a very controversial topic, which is HTML5 versus native. And the reason I chose to speak about this is because there is a war out there between different camps of developers. Um, basically, they're fighting over everything. Um, and the topic that comes um, in the mainstream kind of every couple of years is this mobile versus native. And since, how many of you were um, in Dev Cluj, in Dev Talks in Cluj? Cool, I'm sorry, it's the same presentation, but hope you'll enjoy it. Uh, if, if you know the answer to the next couple of slides, just keep it quiet. Uh, so, because it's the Game of Thrones season, I thought I'd just do a parallel, right? So, let's have a guess. Who do you think how Stark is? This is the web, I'll, I'll start. Um, it's resilient, it's stubborn, it comes back ever, you know, again and again, and it comes back from the dead every so often. Right? Who is House Lannister? Just think of greed. Yeah, this is Flash. It's always shiny, always looking, you know, uses most of the resources um, and gets killed by its own greed. Right? What about House Targaryen? Here be dragons. Uh, this is this is native, right? So um, it comes back from the ashes. Yeah, every so often they make mistakes and they go away, symbian, um, and they just come back from the dead here again and again. And uh, this DNA just kind of a rage to have dragons. Who do you think House Baelish is? Little finger. This is so-called multi-cross-platform tools. This is PhoneGap, right? It's always causing troubles and always goes away when there's trouble. Um, and it's popping its head every so often to cause more trouble. Um, and these days, uh, it's something I'll, I'll get to towards the end of the talk. Uh, it's in the form of different technologies, but uh, two years ago, PhoneGap was the big thing to know. Anyway, there's a war out there. So, we need to understand that no matter what you like, no matter what you want to do, the most important thing is something else. So who here thinks that HTML5 web is the only way to go forward? There shouldn't be any other way. Native is absolutely stupid. Web is the only way to go. Cool. Who do you think is the op who, who here thinks the opposite? Native is the only way to go and the only way to go. <laughs> just for fun, right? Um, well, it turns out that you're both wrong. It doesn't matter what you like and what you want to do, right? The only important thing in this scenario is the client. It doesn't matter how you want to build things one or the, the other. It's not how you feel right. It's the customer and you always need to think of that. And you need to understand that the end customer doesn't care how the information is distributed. At the end of the day, they're looking for information one way or the other. And it needs to be convenient, cheap, and fast. And as long as it's that, it doesn't matter how you deliver it. They're not going to install an app just because you want them to install an app. In the same way, they're not going to install, they're not going to visit a web page just because you want them to. You need to give them a reason to. And web is, is as bad as native in doing these things. Um, I just saw a tweet from someone that said the New York, um, the New York Times homepage is 2.5 megabytes of JavaScript, about 75 megabytes of other crap, uh, about 40 different trackers, and it does 5,900 requests, something like that, which is absolutely mind-blowing, just for getting a newspaper. So, so the business usually asks, should I do mobile, should I do native? Well, do both, right? No one is stopping you from doing both, but it depends how you want to go about it, right? So how many of you are developers actually in the room? because it's quite a broad conference. Okay, the vast majority. How, how many here are designers? Or UX, UI? People can see more than six colors. <laughs> okay, so you, most of you are developers, you know, you know what I'm talking about. 
So you don't need to have native apps, right? Just think of that as well. It's, there's no reason for you to have a native app unless you, the customer needs a native app. It's, it's pointless to do a really bad app. In fact, it's, it's better not to have an app than having a bad one. Right? Because it tells something about your business, how much you care about the customers. Right? And people these days, especially the business, and I'm glad there are not many business people here, they want to be agile and want to do responsive websites. And they just say, oh, I'm just going to do a responsive website and I don't need to do anything else. And the only thing they do responsive is just they drag the window and make it smaller and bigger. And I think that they think that's the only thing to do, you know, that makes it a responsive. It turns out it's just not that. And in most cases, being responsive is just a tick in the box. Right? So you need to go where the eyeballs are. And like the speaker before me that was talking about Emac and the fact that they started the iOS app before they're doing Android because the most majority of the users were iOS. That makes sense. If they started today, it will be the other way around. Apparently today they have more than 70% Android. So it makes sense to do Android if they will start today. So as long as we don't make a platform a dogma, a religion, and try to push it onto others. I think that's, that's the way to do a good job for your customers. You need to go where the attention is. And the attention is going away from the browser and going to a specialist, different scenario. And you need to, to look where your customers are. It doesn't mean that you need to be a jack of all trades and build all these different apps yourself. Although probably some, some will be. But I'm telling you that you should be the master of what you like and not preach it on to others, right? There is no debate about iOS versus Android, and yeah, there are differences in their way of thinking of it, and there is different return on investment in iOS versus Android, and there are different, different scales of deployment, and there are problems, and you know, iOS has problems with long times in the, in the approval process, which went down recently, and that's a good thing. But don't transform a programming language or a platform into, into your dogma, into your religion. And the, the internet, in the same way, it's, it's a massive thing, and it, it, it evolves all the time. So the number of users on, on mobile exceeded on the des desktop some years ago. And that should tell you something where you need to go for your clients, right? What do people actually do inside those devices? Because most of them just use it as a web browser. But the truth is they spend more and more time on their mobile. Who here watches TV with one device next to them? like a mobile phone or a tablet or... Really? Only, only those? No one tweets while they watch Game of Thrones? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I usually have at least one, maybe two devices next to me because that's where we're going. How many of you watched adverts on TV recently? And I'm talking movies, adverts, rather than live events adverts. That's another thing that's changing. People are not watching adverts. So for me, it's mind-blowing that people spend so much money on adverts, right? I actually have a joke where I think that maybe someone should do an advert 30 times slower. So when you play on 30x and you know, go forward, they actually look like a normal one. That'll be interesting. So the way to start this, if you're not into native, is to, to do two major things, is to adapt your content based on the deliberate platform. So that means that pages on mobile shouldn't you know, have all this Chrome around that. And also to truly embrace HTML5. And for me, it's mind-blowing how people just don't do simple things. Like if you look in that, that Slack form, you'll notice that the, that is not marked as an email type entry. So the keyboard here, provided by iOS, is not an email keyboard. So you actually make it harder for users to do it. And Granted, they got it right, actually, in the sign-up. So you'll notice the ad sign here, which gives away. So that's as simple as putting the type of that input thing as, as email. And I would go even more than that. I would, I would think that checking that that type of input text is an email should be part of your testing process, should be part of your testing environment and test. You should have a test specific for that. It's that important for the users. Because if you don't put that, you'll have less conversion. It's as simple as that. It's just about numbers. And you need to be pragmatic about it. Have, have you tried navigating the internet recently without JavaScript? So this is Facebook without JavaScript, right? So granted, they give you access to this mobile optimized website, which is the version they had in 2007 spring. Um, 
That is kind of a, a really bad version of, of Facebook. Um, okay. Um, but Dropbox, for example, you can't use it without JavaScript. Simple as that, you can't. Why? Because something, someone thought that is, is better to, to, to be able to use it with JavaScript, and they thought JavaScript is everywhere, but for some of us old enough to, to remember, some, some actually still browse the internet on a text-only version of a browser, because that's what we like it. And not to talk about the, the OALs you have around the internet. So if you, if you remember back in the day AOL, when you used to go on the internet on the AOL, you were just literally inside this, this browser, this window, and you couldn't go outside. And that's how you navigated the internet. It was encapsulated. And the same thing Facebook is these days. I mean, for me, it's mind-blowing how people think that Facebook is just the internet. That not to say that mobile doesn't have problems, right? So. How many hamburger menus do we need? None. And if you notice on the EMAC presentation earlier, they were saying they're replacing the hamburger menu with a tab bar, even on Android. And there is a reason for that. Because people are not intuitively attracted by those things, and they don't make sense. Why do you have it on the left? Why do you have it on the right? Why do you put it at the top? It doesn't make sense. It's just because someone started using it, and it looks fancy. It doesn't make sense. Not to talk about abominations like this. Granted, this is in the day. Uh, funny enough, the one on the right is actually the first, second version. They thought it, they improved it. But you need to, you need to pay attention to what you're doing. Um, one thing that you shouldn't do, and I, I strongly believe this, you shouldn't do hybrid apps. This is what I call build once, suck everywhere. Right? It's apps where you think that you use phone app or this sort of technology that allows you to build once and kind of release it to different platforms. So. Just to, to try to understand where I'm coming from, if we take native apps, they kind of cost a lot of money, but the performance is good as long as you know what you're doing, right? Web is kind of, it has a good performance. The costs are relatively low because you can reuse skills from web. A hybrid is kind of there. It costs a lot of money because you need to learn something on top of our technologies, and you need to learn the DSL for that particular platform. But what's interesting, and this is where a lot of people get caught, is over time it goes like that. It's really, really hard to keep track of the versions of, of uh, hybrid, and mainly because people go there because we can't invest in other, in other platforms. But over time, it's getting really, really hard um, to maintain a particular, a particular set of apps using hybrid. This is what I call ungraceful degradation. Right? Over time, your app actually becomes worse and worse. And probably the best thing, you know, the best example is Adobe Photoshop. And funny, this is another Adobe technology. Um, finger flash. Um, yeah, they seem to be able to pick the worst thing in the, in the league. Um, they, had, they thought they can, they can actually build once and, and create this platform and release it everywhere. Well, it doesn't really work like that. An iOS user expects an iOS app, right? An Android user expects an Android app. They don't expect the same thing. They perceive an app within the context of a platform. They don't know. I don't know, for example, how the Android platform is. Well, I do, but it's kind of, I don't use it every day, so for me, it's kind of alien, right? So also, have you noticed that with cross-platform tools that experts don't kind of tell you the same framework twice you know, in two years? In two years, they will tell you something else is kind of the top of the league. And this all, all of these use JavaScript, right? So it's always something new. Uh, JavaScript is that language that had five frameworks coming out you know, from the time I started this talk. It's, it's just always something new and shiny. And because it's new and shiny, it doesn't mean you have to use it. Right? But there is a different way to do cross-platform. And actually, there are some really good examples from Xamarin and React Native. But what happens here is actually people make some really, really basic mistakes. They think that because you know JavaScript, you can just use these tools and build stuff. They don't understand that even if it's a different language, there are actually SDKs, there are technologies that you need to understand and learn to be able to use. A very simple classic example is the table views in iOS. So think of iOS, how you scroll things in the contacts, for example. The reason it's so fast is because you reuse cells from the top to the bottom. So you don't allocate actually many objects. 
And this is a specific thing for mobile. It's as simple as that. But if you don't understand these basic things, it's very, very easy to get it wrong in code, no matter what language you use. React Native, for example, for Facebook is a very pragmatic approach because they don't have enough mobile developers to work on all their projects. So what they did is they tried to use people with skills in web for, for native. But they have to learn their SDKs. They need to understand how things work underneath the scenes. You don't just go there and start building, right? So you need to, to give the user the best possible outcome. So it depends what you're trying to, to do. If you're trying to build a Tesla or you're trying to build a Trabant, right? If that's, that's, you need to think how much you care about your customers and how much you care about your business. And surprise and delight. That's, that's how you attract customers. Don't make them wait for pages to load, for things to happen, right? And you need to think of different customers, how you have an accessibility and make it friendly for, for various users. For me, it's mind-blowing how people expect to release apps for children with in-app purchase. That doesn't work, right? Why would, I, I'm happy to pay a bigger price to get, just give, get the app and have everything than actually releasing something for kids with in-app purchasing. For, my, for me, it just doesn't make sense. And it turns out that actually they, in the children apps, it, they don't work. They work everywhere, in-app purchase makes, works everywhere. One example of surprise and delight, I'm not sure how many of you use iOS, but in iPad, if you split the keyboard, um, if you tap in this area here, you can't expect T to be to the left of I, of Y. So if you tap there, it actually registers a T. So there's some hidden buttons there that you don't see. But if you tap there, the T is registered in the input field. Those small things build them like, you know, sort of Easter eggs, if you like. Yeah, that's cool, voila. <laughs> and also learn from the big players, right? So. Facebook migrated from a hybrid app, uh, sorry, from a HTML kind of shell of an app to a hybrid, and the reason they did is because they couldn't get the performance and, and the things out of it in the, in the right way. Learn from, from the top of the league and see what they're using. They use React Native now. Maybe that works for you, but you need to understand that there's a package that comes with that. And also Firefox and Internet of Things. We're going to have a panel later with Internet of Things. Certain things don't work on mobile. Having an OS brow a browser that, uh, sorry, an OS that is based on a browser doesn't really make sense because you just have lots of things happening and it's not the right way to do it. And remember, you have a choice, right, to pick whatever you want. And we can only hope that one day we'll all be using one single language, right? And if you look really close there, you might see some Swift syntax on there. Swift is when you're kidding the block, which I absolutely love. So. Um, but most importantly, I have a message for you, right? Do we have an audio on the computer? No, maybe? Well, let's see. Just do it! Don't let your dreams be dreams. Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it! Make your dreams come true! Just do it! Some people dream of success while you're gonna wake up and work hard at it. Nothing is impossible! You should get to the point or anyone else would quit, and you're not gonna stop there. No, what are you waiting for? Do it! Just do it! Yes, you can! Just do it! If you're tired of starting over, stop giving up. Thank you. So that particular video was, is quite a personal favorite of mine. And um, in a sense, I think the, the IT world, um, kind of everywhere, needs just to, to do something good. 
So if you have any questions, there is someone at the back. No, it's not Nike commercial. It's actually um, uh, <laughs> I get what you're coming from. No, it's a it's an experiment he did with University of um, I think it's University of Westminster, somewhere in the UK. They did they did something inspirational with uh, some of the students, and they try and kind of to build a movie. But do you do you know who that is? How many of you know who that is? Okay, fair point. Okay. Yeah, but it's not Nike, but it kind of fits, right? So. <laughs> Any other questions? No? In that case, thank you very much for attending. Oh, there is one. Sorry. Sorry. Go on. Sorry. The third is in the application web la una hybrid. I understood only hybrid. My my spinata? Deja trece cineva de la aplicație hibridă, de la aplicație web la una hibridă sau inversă. Am auzit în prezentarea dumneavoastră. Well, the reason uh, I'll ask you, what in English, okay? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, just, why uh, is something uh, someone uh, want to take from the web to hybrid? Um, not to hybrid, but to native. There's a difference native, there. Okay. Uh, the native. The reason you want to do it is because the eyeballs are there. So most of the customers are migrating from the browser as it is to native. And you don't necessarily want to go there unless you have the attention there. It's a pragmatic thing. You just go where the eyeballs are. Because it, it, you're in a business of, you know, the reason you're in business is to, to make profit, right? So you need to find your, your biggest range of customers. Okay. Uh, so I saw that native have a higher cost and performance. Yes. Maybe someone uh, want to take from native to web uh, inverse. So. Absolutely. If people are, I, I, I doubt that someone goes straight to native and not have a web presence. Um, a good example for it will be Instagram, for example. Instagram starting over mobile, it's it's mainly on mobile, but they have a web presence as well. So when when you share from Instagram on Twitter, for example, that goes to a web page that shares your kind of shows your share. But it doesn't mean you can browse the whole Instagram on on web. Right? Okay, thank you.